In less than 10 years, natural gas has leapt from a fringe fuel to a viable alternative to diesel fuel. When Cummins Westport unveiled the 12-liter ISX 12G natural gas engine last year, it gave the regional market the power plant it was looking for to take full advantage of natural gas. Now, Freightliner has wrapped a short BBC Cascadia day cab around the ISX 12G, giving regional haulers something to get really excited about. Park here, freelance trucking journalist and test pilot extraordinaire. I'm in Napa, California once again, this time getting the goods on a rapidly emerging alternative fuel technology, natural gas. Specifically, Freightliner's updated Cascadia 113 day cab with a Cummins Westport ISX 12G engine fueled by compressed natural gas. This engine is in hot demand right now and for good reason. With compressed natural gas fuel selling for roughly half the price of diesel and with performance nearly equal to its diesel-powered counterpart, it's a very cost-effective weapon in the fleet's war on costs. Freightliner has packaged the ISX 12G nicely into the Cascadia 113, mated it to an Allison 4000 automatic transmission and supplied enough onboard compressed natural gas to run up to 600 miles on a single slow fill. In a regional application, this truck could seamlessly replace diesel-powered trucks, saving fleets a ton of money over the life of the truck and positioning the fleet as thoroughly green and environmentally conscious operators. The only questions remaining are, will drivers like the new fuel and will customers accept the higher upfront costs for natural gas power? Let's start by defining some of the differences between natural gas and diesel. Bob Carrick, the national sales manager for natural gas trucks at Freightliner, says going down the road, there's hardly any difference at all. It isn't the same as diesel. The, the torque characteristics are a little bit different, just slightly, but a, a well-seasoned driver will notice it immediately. Uh, the Allison Automatic uh, makes it uh, a very drivable product, and you really can't tell the difference between a diesel and a uh, natural gas engine. Uh, if you had a manual transmission, there would be a very slight difference in your shift patterns. As you shift up, there's a, about a half a second delay, and as you downshift, there's about a half a second delay that you have to uh, incorporate into your shift technique. Uh, but the Allison Automatic takes that uh, completely out of it. Of course, driver acceptance is a very big part of making natural gas work. They're not going to happily or easily give up performance just to save the boss a few bucks. Driver acceptance is very, very good with the trucks, uh, uh, but at, very, at the very first you have to do some extensive training. Uh, it's a different fuel, they're not used to it, they don't understand how it uh, operates just a little bit differently, and quite frankly they're concerned about the safety of the, of the fuel and the truck. But once you give them some training and show them that natural gas is as safe or safer than diesel or gasoline uh, and also is quiet and it, uh, they don't come home at night smelling like they've taken a bath in diesel if they've fueled their diesel truck, uh, they, they truly do appreciate the, the natural gas. And the customers we have that have multiple trucks say that their drivers are always uh, standing in line to get, in, get into one of the natural gas vehicles. Mike Del Bovo, the president of Saddle Creek Logistics in Lakeland, Florida, is one of Freightliner's largest natural gas customers. With more than 100 compressed natural gas fuel tractors already in service, he says he's already over the driver acceptance hump. The drivers initially were pretty scared about the technology. They didn't know what was going to happen. They were afraid it was going to explode. But natural gas doesn't ignite till 1200 degrees. Diesel ignites at about 450, 460. So diesel is a much lower flash point. You know, you would never cook with diesel, you cook with natural gas. It's much safer fuel. If we have ever an accident, the fuel just dissipates in the atmosphere. It never goes on the ground. You never spill a drop. So uh, once the driver is able to see the video on how safe it was, once they really got the training, we overcome those, overcame those objections, and they are all for it. And the final party in the acceptance loop is the customer. Fleets have had a notoriously difficult time getting rate hikes to stick since the recession. Going to a customer now and asking for more just because your fleet is trying to save money might be a tough sell. Mike Del Bovo took a novel approach. He offered customers a share in the savings if they demonstrated some commitment to the project. We've worked with all of our customers on our natural gas solution and some are willing to invest with us and they share the greatest savings. Other customers are very willing to help participate in some level to help us pro this project uh, succeed and then they share in the savings based on their amount of commitment towards the project. These trucks are expensive. There's a lot of capital up front you have to do to purchase these trucks. Uh, and the payoff is, of course, as fuel continues to climb on the diesel side, these trucks will continue to have a better ROI. While it's good to be green and demonstrate a commitment to environmental sustainability, the dog has to hunt. 
We've seen other promising technologies go by the wayside because of costs or other hurdles. Natural gas seems to be the favored technology at the moment. But is current uptake just a fad? Just fleets getting on the green bandwagon? Well, it seems fleets are seeing some very compelling reasons to get on board. Customers are buying into the natural gas concept for a number of reasons. And certainly the, the green factor is a big one. They, they market that uh, uh, extensively. But at the end of the day, it has to save them money. And when they're buying their fuel at half the price of diesel, and they're paying off the, uh, the ROI on the additional cost of the vehicle in about two to three years, uh, that's what's making this work. Because after that, they can put in their pocket anywhere from thirty to $50,000 a year, depending on the mileage that they operate and the price of the fuel that they're sourcing. Like nearly everything else in trucking, there seems to be technologies that suit certain applications better than others and vice versa. For a variety of reasons, natural gas is having a tough time cracking the long haul market, but there are plenty of other applications where the homegrown and abundant fuel certainly does work. A great application for natural gas is anything that's in the regional or uh, corridor uh, type of an application where you're running anywhere from 300 to 500 miles a day out and back and you have your own fuel source. If you can uh, do that and source your fuel in that $1.50 to $2.25 range, that makes it work very, very well and you have a, a, an excellent control of your fuel at that point. And that's just where Freightliner's new Cascadia day cab fits in. It's a regional truck with a range limited by the markets it serves. It doesn't need a sleeper, but it does need about five to 600 miles of range and it needs to poop to get the job done. In the second part of our look at this CNG-powered Cascadia 113, I'll focus on the fuel itself. What is a diesel equivalent gallon? Which is better, liquefied or compressed natural gas? And how far will a tank full take you? If you're still guessing, check it out. From Napa, California, the home of great wine and the place where great trucks make their debut, I'm freelance trucking journalist Jim Park.